Welcome to Worship at New Scotland Presbyterian Church. I'm the Reverend Holly Cameron, and so glad you could be with us for this day of Pentecost. The flower and flame decorations on the pulpit were given by Brenda Dwyer. So many thanks to Brenda for that. And now let us open our worship with words from Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving, singing joyful songs of praise. Let us worship God together. Let us pray. Almighty God, you poured your spirit upon gathered disciples, creating bold tongues, open ears, and a new community of faith. We confess that we hold back the force of your spirit among us. We do not always listen for your word of grace, or speak the good news of your love, or live as a people made one in Christ. Have mercy on us, O God, and fill us with the enlivening desire to be your faithful people. May your word fill us with joy and confidence so that we may do your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Dear friends in Christ, there is nothing in us that is so dead, nothing on this earth that is so dead that it cannot be brought to life by the spirit of grace. Hear the good news. Our God is always creating, even us, and offers a new beginning for each one of us. Thanks be to God, amen. The Psalm appointed for today are selected verses from Psalm 104. Let us listen for the word of God. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things, both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. 
These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Here ends the reading. May God bless us with understanding. Now we have time for our kids, and so I hope the kids will be able to be here for this part of the video, and I'll come out of the pulpit as I do each week for our kids' time. Hi kids, I'm so glad that I can talk to you through this video while we're still apart. Today is a very special day called Pentecost, and Pentecost is the birthday of the church. Not just the church here at New Scotland, but the whole Christian church. Because what happened on Pentecost was that the Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples. They were all gathered in one place, and suddenly they started to hear the sound of a wind blowing, a really big, hard wind blowing everywhere. And then they looked, and they could see there were tongues of fire over their heads. And that's why we wear red on Pentecost, is so we are celebrating the flames that happened on Pentecost. But the amazing thing was the flames did not burn the disciples. They could just see them dancing over their heads. And between the wind and the flames, suddenly the disciples were able to speak in other languages that they did not know before. So there were all kinds of people who were in Jerusalem that day, and they started to hear all this commotion of the wind and all of this talking, and they all came around to see what was going on because they couldn't quite make sense out of it. And so the disciples started to tell them about Jesus. Peter preached a sermon about how, who Jesus was and how he came to teach us to live in God's way. And there were 3,000 people who decided they wanted to follow Jesus that day. And they all got baptized, and that is how the church started, was on that day when the Holy Spirit came and lots and lots of people wanted to come and be part of the community of Jesus. So every year on Pentecost, we celebrate the Holy Spirit that started the church, and we know the Holy Spirit helped the disciples do something they had never done before. And the Holy Spirit helps our churches to do things that we might never have done before either. So we are very happy to celebrate the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. So now we're going to take some time to watch the um, video of the pictures you guys have been sending in for the last few weeks. So let's take a look at those pictures.
Those were some great pictures. Thank you guys for sending them in to us. So I hope you'll keep sending us pictures. If you didn't see your picture this week, um, it'll be in a week coming up. So I hope you'll keep sending us pictures that remind us about God's love and God's hope. We've had so many different things that we've been thinking about in these weeks about love and hope and also our church family. So send us pictures of you too. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, on this special day of Pentecost, we give thanks for your Holy Spirit that helps us to share your good news with people all around the world. We give you thanks for New Scotland Church, where people have come for over 230 years to learn about you. And we pray that your spirit will keep us excited so that we can continue to grow in the ways you have planned for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> The second reading for today is how Luke tells us the story of Pentecost in the Acts of the Apostles. Let us continue to listen for God's word to us. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. May God bless us with understanding. The church was born on Pentecost. When the disciples gathered that day, they were a relatively small group. Probably there were 70 to 120 of them gathered together. They would have fit right here in our sanctuary just a small group of ordinary folks who believed what Jesus taught and wanted to live in God's way. And then, without any warning, the Holy Spirit blew in and changed everything they had known. They started out fitting in a room about this size, and by the end of their worship that day, they had 3,000 new believers. It sounds amazing, but I think it also sounds kind of scary. I cannot imagine what we would do if we suddenly had 3,000 people in our parking lot wanting to be part of the church. We would hardly know where to begin, and the life that we have known would be forever changed. Change is not something we always welcome. And even when we say we're open to change, a lot of times we say we're open as long as change comes slowly. And yet it seems clear that God means for the world and for life to be continually changing. The world turns, we have day and night, we have winter and summer, old things die, new things are born. There is nothing about this life that is static. And yet, we still resist change. It's true for us as individuals. It's true for the church as well. It's been said that we never actually say this prayer, come Holy Spirit and help us remain exactly what we already are. We may not pray it, but we often act that way. Even though we say that we understand that our God is a God of new life and the Holy Spirit is all about bringing change, most of the time we resist meaningful change in favor of trying to go back to the way things used to be. And the way it used to be really means the way I remember it and the way that makes me comfortable. But God is not really about keeping us comfortable. Think again about that day of Pentecost. God's faithful people from all around the world had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the religious festival. They were from all different countries and spoke all different languages, but they likely all spoke some Greek, which was the language of the empire. But when the Holy Spirit comes, the disciples do not speak the word of God in Greek so that everybody can kind of understand. No, God is not about using the language of the empire. Instead, the Holy Spirit causes the disciples to speak in every language of the world so that every person hears God's message in their native language that they already understand. God is not so much about making us comfortable. God is more about reaching out and connecting people of all languages and backgrounds and experiences. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is the challenge for every church. How do we give ourselves away so that people outside 
hear God's amazing message of love and mercy and peace and compassion and justice. When I consider the news I hear and read every day, I tell you I'm not just glad, I am relieved to have the church where I can hear the gospel. Gospel, we know, means good news. And in this media-driven world, what do we need to hear more than good news? I need the church because I am hungering to hear the gospel. It's not just good news. It's the best news. That's what church is all about. The Holy Spirit blew through that room in Jerusalem so that we would tell people in their own language about God's love in Jesus Christ, the best news there is. One minister says the question the church needs to ask is, who needs us? What can we do to show God's love to this part of the world? It's not easy. We live in a world where things change by the minute. So we need the Holy Spirit to blow us in the right direction. And with that, we need to keep in mind two things. First, the Holy Spirit does not come to solve our problems, but to create new problems. The disciples did not go back to being fishermen and accountants. The Spirit came and gave them 3,000 new people to teach, so they had to expand their travels beyond Jerusalem, beyond Galilee, beyond Samaria, to head out to all these foreign lands to continue Jesus' work. See, when we figure out who needs us, our lives get tangled up in theirs. It's amazing to me in this time of pandemic how every church I know has had to reinvent itself. We've said for years that we reach fewer and fewer people and have wondered what to do about it. Now this virus comes and turns our world upside down and so we've all scrambled to find new ways of reaching out. We've all gone digital, and most of us have seen the number of views for our online worship services. Those numbers are more than when we were meeting in person. The Holy Spirit has helped us to reach more people than when, before the pandemic. But it's created other problems too, hasn't it? Who among us is not longing to see our friends and our loved ones and give them a great big hug. The Holy Spirit blows its creative winds on us to stir things up, not settle them down. Some of our problems may be solved, but we probably find a bunch of new problems too. The second thing about the Holy Spirit is that the Spirit does not prevent failure, but invites it. We have to change how we think about failure. Failure is not a sign of weakness. Failure is a sign that you're trying something new. The tech world has embraced this concept. In fact, I've heard of companies where you cannot get promoted unless you can show three projects you tried that failed. Because if you're not failing, then you're not really doing anything new. I've heard that Thomas Edison tested thousands of designs and elements to invent the commercial light bulb. And when asked by a reporter about how he felt about failing 1,000 times, Edison said something like, I did not fail 1,000 times. I discovered the light bulb was a thousand step process. 
This is a great lesson for the church, too. If we do not have to be afraid of failing, then we can really take some risks, trusting that the Holy Spirit is moving us forward. Because really any success we think we have is not about our good ideas or our excellent abilities, but about God working through us. Remember that the success of the resurrection only came after the failure of the crucifixion. Pentecost happened over 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem, and Pentecost keeps happening wherever and whenever we allow the Spirit to lead us. Are we willing to give up our settled, comfortable arrangements to follow the living and active Spirit? For the church to be alive, the Holy Spirit must be allowed to flow through it. And for our faith to be alive, the Holy Spirit must be flowing through us as well. So my prayer for this Pentecost is that the Spirit will continue to change us and deepen us and give us the joy of new life ever flowing. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Loving God, on this day of Pentecost, when you sent your Holy Spirit to transform your people, we celebrate how your Spirit still empowers us to understand one another in ways we did not understand before. We pray that you will send your Holy Spirit upon all your sons and daughters, upon women and men, young and old, so that we may continue to hear your word to us. O oh God, on this day of remembering people from different cultures with different languages, give us a renewed desire for peace. Give us a vision of your understanding that we might celebrate diversity and all bow at your throne so that we may serve you above all others. O oh God of healing, we pray for the brokenness of this world, broken people, broken places, and broken hearts, for those who are sick and in the hospital, for those who are dying and those who are in mourning, for those without food, without homes, without jobs, for those locked away in prison and those imprisoned by addiction. May your spirit of peace and healing blow among all brokenness and inspire us to reach out in caring. Help us to live with boldness and strength following the radical and life-giving way of Jesus Christ. And hear us as we say the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God has given us so many gifts, and God asks that we use those gifts in service of others. Churches depend on the generosity of members and friends to do our ministries. So if you can give us a financial gift during this time, we are so grateful for that gift. If all you can give us in this time are your prayers, please know we are so grateful for that gift. Whether it's money or time or attention, a phone call, a letter, a card, decorating our yards and our homes, there are so many ways for us to reach out and care for one another so that we know we are not alone. We are in this together. As we come to the end of the service, go with this blessing of Pentecost. May the fire of the Holy Spirit warm your hearts. May the wind of Pentecost inspire your souls. And may the tongue of the Spirit give your faith new voice. Go out with the blessing of God, both this day and always. Amen.